I'm going to give it... <laughs> Big drum roll. God, I know I want to give it. And I know the polite answer. Welcome back, everybody. If you are new here, if you're into music and movies, please do consider subscribing. We've got it all, basically, exclusive music interviews. We've got unpackings of TV shows. Details about a new one coming up in just a moment. Uh, also, movie reviews and festival coverage. But today... We're doing Boys on Film. We are reviewing a new drama movie, which is out soon. It's called Frankie. That was a brilliant intro of a million things we're working on. I know. I feel like my head's about to explode. I've got to try and keep up with everything. Move everybody out now. I think you did a really, really good job. Shall we talk about Unpacked? Because we're back with a new season. It's season two. Very excited about what we're covering. As regular viewers will know, we unpacked It's a Sin, episode by episode, over... Gosh, I can't remember when it was now. It was like... a few weeks ago. <laughs> but no, it's back <laughs> no. in January, We've been to festivals since then. <laughs> I know, yeah. That's <laughs> what I mean. I but yeah, we, we covered the whole of It's a Sin, uh, which was amazing. And we had, you know, we did live episodes, premieres, and we did a big debate, a big discussion group online. It was fab. But we are back, back, back again with um, the season two of Special. It's like smash hits all over again, isn't it? Back, back, back with exclamation back, back, back. marks. That's we us. are back, back, back. So yes, yeah, so we're doing the season two of Special. Loved season one. Oh, love, love, love it. Brilliant. Um, so I'm very excited. And you and I are going to be there episode by episode, taking the legendary children and the viewers through it. I mean, it really is Ryan O'Connell's baby because he's just the mastermind behind this. He's not only written it, I think executive produces it. Uh, yeah, but it's season two, and we're going to do things a little bit differently with this one, because with It's a Sin, that was obviously broadcasting on Channel 4 every Friday, and this one is going out all together, so people can binge watch it if they want to. Somebody did a comment on our Facebook page today saying, um, I'm not really going to binge watch, because I think because they're, cause they're a little bit longer, these episodes, they're half an hour compared to 17, 15 minutes for the pre mm. previous season, so I think people are going to, you know, wait to enjoy it less often. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, we're we're going to be there with you every step of the way. Um, can't wait. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. 20th of May, that's when it premieres, by the way, on Netflix. So we'll be doing a run of probably a week or two of these yeah. premieres that are going up on, on YouTube okay. for special season two. Right, we, okay. Phil and I thought we hadn't got enough to watch or see. <laughs> so we thought we'd just add fun. Can't, I really can't wait about special. It's really quite exciting. So Frankie, an interesting movie. I think it's taken a couple of years to get to these shores though, because I think it was out in France and in the States back in 2019. I think it premiered at a couple of festivals over there. I think it premiered at Cannes actually in 2019. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. 2019, written and directed by Iris Sachs. Are you familiar um, with him? Because I know that his first movie was kind of LGBT themed because he is a, you know, an out gay filmmaker mm -hmm. from the States. Yeah, I think he's, I think uh, he's got some connections with friends of mine in New York. Yeah, very much so. Um, done a couple of movies in the past that were quite well received. But this is a very interesting movie and a very different approach. I mean... Um, filmed in Sintra in Portugal, which looks absolutely beautiful. So yeah, I, I, it kind of he wasn't on his home patch, which he has been before. So I think that's, I think it's interesting. I wonder if that changed the mood of how he how he worked with this movie. So yes, yeah, so it, it's got Isabel Huppert plays Frankie Francois, uh, and she's organised this vacation um, for her extended modern family uh, in Sintra, uh, and that modern family includes her ex husband. Michelle, who is a gay man, yeah. her current husband, who is Brendan Gleeson, her daughter Sylvia and Sylvia's husband, Ian, their daughter Maya, and her son, Paul. So you've got this whole mix of like the extended family. Then you layer in her best friend, who's Marissa Tomei, who was her makeup artist from New York, and they're really good friends, and her kind of lover, played by Greg Kinnear. So you've got a lot of people oh my God. all in Sintra. <laughs> It's like hierarchy of stories all there for um, for Frankie. Yeah. And you realise maybe a little bit into the storyline why they're there. And it's quite a serious reason why they've all grouped together um, to be there for Frankie. Yeah. I was going to ask you if you thought it was a bit of a spoiler to... Because I, I don't think you actually know that right at the very beginning, do you? It is revealed, like you say, later on. So I think yeah. it could be a bit of a spoiler because I know that it is in the synopsis. So much to unpack. I mean, you, you explain the complexities of all these relationships and the irony that they're there for a party because these people... <laughs> 
<laughs> These people just don't seem like they want to have fun at all. They're like complaining about everything, aren't they? I thought it was hilarious. Yeah. Like, not intentionally, probably, because I've read, you know, various reviews that, you know, people say this is meant to be a comedy, but I didn't I didn't think it was funny for that reason. I just thought it was funny that these people were so were so miserable. Oh, I didn't get comedy. Maybe <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> didn't get comedy. I got you know, it's just interesting because you you it's kind of a, a whole thing about the human condition. So new love, old love, yeah, love that's breaking down. Learning lessons. It kind of it kind of runs through all of this kind of it runs through the film down from like her granddaughter Maya having her first kiss through to her relationship with Brendan Gleeson and what that means. Her, I'm, I'm not going to say too much, but like Frankie trying to match make a little bit. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's all about, it's all these kind of connotations of the human condition and love and how that plays out across generations and across time, really. I, I love a thorny personality in a movie. <laughs> and there were plenty of these. Um, I, I like to see how characters don't always get on as well because i think sometimes that can be a bit predictable i, I quite like the story i quite like the the thought of them coming together even though they weren't people that were necessarily meant to be together but i love the fact also that as the film went along i did warm to the characters more because at, at the beginning i thought oh my god i'm not gonna enjoy this i really did find it not so much a snooze fest because i think that's a bit unfair because it is quite a slow paced film and i i like slow paced films Sintra for me was one of the key characters. It was so beautiful. For me, I liked it. There's a a lot slash too much going on. Yeah. Um. Some of the some of the storylines and plot lines were probably redundant and kind of ran out. Ran yeah, out that was the problem I had because I kind of want to know more now that the film is finished. When you see the end, I almost wanted it to start halfway in and go further. But the first half, I probably could have done without. But I guess it's just building building the characters, isn't it? Character development. You should just put a huge sticker on the screen over my face that says, my favourite line, it could have been 20 minutes short. <laughs> um, <laughs> that old chestnut. <laughs> it, but it could. It could. There was a lot of... It was a bit bloated. For me, it had a very similar energy to Supernova, um, the film directed in 2020 by, by Harry McQueen. Now, I know, I think you and I think differently about Supernova. Yeah. Um, I enjoyed it more than you did, I think, didn't I? That's the truth. Yeah. Um, for me, it had that kind of energy to it that I didn't love in Supernova and I didn't particularly love in this film. I was, I love Isabel Hooper. I think she's an absolute legend. She is a legend, right? See, her, her character, I mean, so nonchalant, so laid back. I almost didn't care about her to begin with, but she became more playful as, as the film went on she brought these people together and in, in a way she was almost like on the outside looking in at them she did find herself hiking up a lot of mountains in high heels i'm just gonna put that out there <laughs> wouldn't we all want to do that though I, that's I why i, I love her so much i was like if i was isabella huber i too would hike up mountains in high i also don't think you get full isabella huber she did say her character was different and her and her acting was different because she was acting in english but if you think about something like eight women like she's so playful and that film is so brilliant and lol she's a very different character but she is playing she, uh someone speaking english she, so yeah. i think some of that does come through in her character um did i think we needed the greg kinnear character probably not yeah i think brendan gleason uh, yeah, oh my god he's just such a diverse actor as well i mean we've seen him 28 days later in paddington 2 and now this obviously he's done a lot of you know very and serious he's, roles he's done frank of ireland with his he's son. so good I'm just going to say something that you're not going to like. <laughs> Miscast. I just don't think... A bit they wasted. didn't use Brennan Gleeson to his, to his full capacity. He was just this, like, thing. A piece of mise-en-scene. He was just like, what is Brendan Gleeson's... What's his role here? Because I felt more about the gay ex-husband. Michelle. Well, that's what I found really interesting, was was how how far that character went. Yeah, exactly. But, in this film. But this thing was yeah. just this, like, device. This, like, miserable device. Like, oh, isn't... Um... And I don't know whether... There's a bit later with Marissa Tomei where I was like, oh, I kind of get something there. He's a brilliant... He, he is a brilliant actor. I'm not sure whether this really demonstrates... As a character playing... Um, what's his name in the film? Jimmy. I just don't know, Phil, whether he we got the most out of Brendan Gleeson or whether he was just this kind of miserable device. I like the, the, the miserable, spoilt son, Jeremy Renier. I quite liked him. I was like, oh, he's just completely, he's a brat. But I think he played the brat really well, you know? I was like, 
He's horrible. Is it Sylvia, the character played by Vinette Robinson, who yeah. was in Sherlock? She, she, she kind of irritated irritated me a little bit because she did come across as quite spoiled. But I, yeah, I think that, I mean the husband. I thought yeah. he seemed great. I, I I don't know what she was complaining about, but then I I obviously was not yeah. married to him. That Maybe relationship that was just like Maya. Thinking. Maya, who's their daughter, kind of goes off and has this kind of like whatever. Yeah, she's like living her fantasy. Good for her. And then Ian and Sylvia just really t- ball of tense energy. Uh, and there's just moments where, okay, she's the daughter of a famous actor, Frankie. But there's one one scene where she's an absolute brat when they're having <laughs> dinner. And I was just like, oh, what an idiot. Your husband seems actually really quite nice. I know, yeah. That's <laughs> what I thought as well. <laughs> so it's, yeah, an interesting movie. Probably not a perfect movie by any means, but um, yeah, I'm going to go for a three star because I did enjoy it as the film went on. But to begin with, I did think that it was going to be a bit of a stinker and I wasn't going to get into it at all. But but I think it was largely saved by, by the actors. I'm going to give it... <laughs> Big drum roll. God, I know I want to give it and I know the polite answer. I'm going to give it two stars. I'm just, I need to be true to myself. It's two stars. Wow. Just wow. <laughs> it is just wow. Actually, the movie, no. But the rest, no. <laughs> Not so much for the movie. <laughs> so it's Frankie. I think it's out now. Or it might be out at the end of May. But yeah, it's been a long time coming. And don't forget to subscribe because we are back with Unpacked and also Flick Flop Season 2. Forgot to mention that earlier. We are back with Flick Flop. Gail Porter is back with us to go through some of the best slash worst slash questionable movies of all time. The most brilliant format ever. Can't wait. Really, We've so got excited. an amazing list of movies to tackle as well, haven't we? Amazing. Some really fun guests. Ooh, it's going to be brilliant. Brilliant. Check out the playlist of the previous season if you haven't seen that. We've got Showgirls. We've got Desperately Seeking Susan. Harold and Maud. It's all there. Did you say Showgirls? Did you say Showgirls? Oh, yes, you said Showgirls. <laughs> got to go out with that. <laughs> Good to see you, Sean. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and like.